Good Monday morning. Oh, I always start my Monday morning with a harmonics. Um, today I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna visit one of the coolest things I've ever been involved in in my uh, in my career. Uh, it was really such a treat uh, the first time I got to work with Jackson Brown. Uh, when we did his first album and when I posted uh, Dr. My Eyes earlier. And, and, um, he's an amazing artist and I've valued his friendship and his artistry for, for decades now. But one of the most enjoyable times we ever had was when in the late 70s, 78 I think it was, we did the Running on Empty tour and did the live album from that. Now, Lots of people have done live albums, and many times the uh, the live album consists, by the time they're finished doctoring it, at the end of the process, it, it remains to be like the audience, and everybody's going, oh, i gotta, I got to fix that, oh, there's clams all over it. Pretty much running on empty, what you hear on that album is exactly how it went down on the road. We were recording... In the tour bus, we were recording in Holiday Inn rooms. I remember we tore this one room apart, not tore it apart where it was damaged, but um, I remember having my little bass amp underneath a desk uh, in, the, in the hollow where the chair would go as a little bass trap. Um, we took the bed apart and set the box spring and the mattress up on the walls and set the drums up in there just to kind of deaden them. And Jackson was singing in the bathroom for the acoustics and, uh, and Craig had his electric probably had his roads set up in the room. I mean, it's just like every day was an adventure. Um, the, the band was, it, it was with the section opening. So it was Danny Korchmar, myself, Russ Kunkel, and Craig Durge were the opening act on the tour. Then we would come out and do Jackson's show uh, with the addition of the remarkable David Lindley um, and uh, Rosemary Butler, and Doug Hayward on, um, on background vocals. And uh, Lindley I've known since like 68 maybe, when he was in the group Kaleidoscope. And uh, at the at kind of the end of the, the section's uh, tenure, David started playing with us too, and it was remarkable. And maybe someday there was a, a live concert that we did opening for James Taylor that would have Lindley in the band too, at, I think at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. And uh, it's kind of mind blowing. I mean, it's, it's the band at the top of its powers and then having David added to the equation really made just uh, an absolutely unbelievable experience. But the Running on Empty Tour was, was just great. I mean, we had an amazing crew of people, Greg Ladani, rest his soul, um, he died a few years ago in an accident um, in Greece, falling from a stage uh, where he was, he had just done Anna Vesey's album and she was starting her tour and he decided to go over and be there for the beginning of the tour and all that and tripped off of a, a stage. And, but he was uh, one of the finest engineers I've ever worked with. And uh, so he was on this. And, and the crew was amazing. I mean, Doc and Rance, all these guys. Um, uh, one of the crew guys was Jan Alejandro. And Jan went on to perform. Um, uh, Jan, oh, man, I, I love senior moments. Jan L. I mean, how, his name's Jan Alejandro, and I can't, I'm blanking on the name of the company. Jan L. Case Company, which is one of the biggest uh, case companies in the business. He's done unbelievably great on this. I have a whole bunch of Jan L. Cases. I can't believe I just spaced out. I'm thinking, J and L, how's, how's it go? Man, I'll tell you, Monday morning, I'm doing all these early because I've got a, we've got a band Zoom thing today that we're doing and then uh this afternoon denny tedesco is coming to the house to do i'm going to do my interview for the immediate family documentary film that they're making so there's all kinds of stuff going on so my brain is pretty scrambled right now just had the dogs out for their morning walk and just taking care of stuff around the house so that's that's the thing you know i i, I love doing these videos and i'm really committed to doing them and continuing on into the future with them. 
but I've really got to like, it's really taking a lot of brain power to relearn songs I haven't played. Um, you know, get, I have like a, a run through or two for something I haven't played in 40 years. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's an experience I've never had and I'm totally digging it. I guess it's kind of making the, uh, the old brain function a little bit longer here. Um, but back to running on empty. So we did like tons of gigs on it, recorded everything and, um, just one adventure after another. And it was a, a an amazingly great tour and it's an amazingly great record that still stands the test of time, considering it's this many decades old. Uh, it still is, when you listen to it, it feels fresh and exciting. Got Rosemary Butler singing her butt off on this, and she still sings great. Um, and everybody is, is just, and, and for the fact that now I'm in the immediate family with me, Russ, and Cooch are, you know, three-fifths of the immediate family were on this, on this tour, too. Um, and it was an interesting time with us because with the section opening, we also opened for James Taylor. So the offices would, uh, we had different, they had different management companies. So they would be juggling schedules to make sure that like when James's tour ended, there could be just, we could butt the tours up as close as possible and then get the band out there on Jackson's tours. So we were working our, our, our butts off on it. And man, it was it was just great. But so today I thought I would just, this is uh, from uh, the live show. This is, this is running on empty and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let me, uh, let me hit start and let's get going.
running on empty. Okay, got through that one. It's so amazing, though, just, you know, suddenly try and, try and get yourself into the headspace of what was going on. Uh, on that tour, uh, Yamaha had come to Los Angeles in the very beginning of the 70s, around 71 or so, with a whole bunch of experimental basses. And they gave a whole bunch of us, uh, the bass players in town, each an individual bass. It was all for evaluation. I remember being there with Abe Laboreal Sr., and he got one. And I got this red thing that kind of was like a takeoff on a precision P bass. And, uh, and that's what I used on this. I used that on your smiling face. Um, it was a really nice sounding bass. Um, I eventually ended up selling a whole bunch of instruments or giving, you know, a lot of them went to hard rock cafes. They're, they're kind of in hard rocks all over the world. Um, there were things about the bass I just loved. And there were things about it I just hated. The, uh, the tuning machines on it. They look like um, something that would have been on the end of the chariot wheels in Ben-Hur for ripping the flesh out of, of, of a horse's legs going by. I mean, they were like really terrible and you were always scraping your knuckles when you were trying to tune. And as you would play, the pickup would slowly descend down into the, uh, the body. For some reason, you could not get this thing to stay, no matter how much Loctite or anything I put. It was very strange, but it was a great sounding uh, instrument. But I, I love, I love, like I said, I love that tour. I loved everybody. I'm still in touch with um, most of the guys that were involved on the and girls that were involved on that tour. Uh, it was uh, quite, a, quite an amalgamation of personalities and characters out there. Um, one of the uh, one of the strangest moments for me was um, I put together this monstrous bass rig for the uh, for the section set. And Gene Serwinski, who owned Serwin Vega speakers, built me um, a set of cabinets that had 24-inch bass speakers. You know, they looked like manhole covers. Well, when we got to the gig, I think it was at Robin Hood Dell in Philadelphia. Uh, the gig beforehand, the... Uh, for some reason, I, I think what happened was that the, the magnet was too heavy for the frame. And I started playing and shredded the speakers. I mean, they, they were just ripped to shreds. Um, so we contacted them and they shipped us out new speakers that were supposed to be at the Robin Hood gig. And somebody went to the airport to get them and then got sidetracked. And I think went and had dinner or something like that. Needless to say, the speakers didn't make it back for it. And I ended up playing our section show, um, going through a, a, a mid-range speaker and a tweeter. So you know, instead of the bass being just this big, it was more like. I mean, it was like one of the worst experiences of my entire life. I was like completely flipping out. And, uh, and under stress like that, I get a real short fuse. So I, got, I was really pissed off trying to play a pretty aggressive fusion show with just a, this sounds like a woodpecker going at my gear. Uh, but this stuff arrived and I eventually got rid of all of that. It was just too much. Um, and I changed over to Klipsch at that point, which was the rig I had when I did Billy Thorpe's Children of the Sun. At some point, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that and, and play that. I won't physically play it because it was so much production, but man... Thorpe, you know, was quite an adventure, and it was, I loved working with him. We had we had an amazing time. But um, so I look back at running on empty as really one of those experiences of a lifetime to do a truly live, a live album, and uh, what you hear is what you got, and uh, and just all the time we had recording on the road and traveling together and stuff was was pretty cool. So I wish everybody a great week ahead. Um, I'm going to get ready now for our Zoom interview conference with the band and then get get myself all fluffed up for when Denny gets here to st start doing, uh, we're kicking off the interview section of our movie and I'm the, I'm the, uh, the guinea pig that's going to start this part of it. But Denny's work is, is amazing because Denny, if you don't know it, he's the one who did the Wrecking Crew movie. And his father was Tommy Tedesco, who was probably one of the finest guitar players ever to grace any record that's ever been recorded. And one of the true characters of the music business. 
Uh, I love Danny dearly and his family, and known him forever. So, um, so he, he's in the process of making this documentary movie about the immediate family, which will be out next year. They've done a ton of interviews um, with other, other our, all the artists, many of the artists we've worked with, and they've got a forensic person working on all kinds of archival footage and all kinds of stuff. It's gonna. I'm curious. I have no clue where this is headed, but I know it's going to be great because Denny's great. And um, so I'll do my interview today, and I'll be sure and mention all of you because this is what's happening in my life now. And um, so have a great week. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll figure something. I had a couple of things I was thinking about doing today, and then I just happened to think about running on empty, and I thought I'd kick the, uh, the week off with some Jackson Brown because you can't go wrong with that. Um, and... Uh, I know some people don't like it, but tough shit. Shout out to all of the people that are out there working so hard for us, keeping this keeping this country and world afloat, because uh, every report I see, numbers are climbing. So be very careful out there. You know, Protect yourself, protect all those around you, and protect the people who are trying to save you and make your life better. So love you guys. Take good care, and I will see you tomorrow. And I reach for the off button, and it goes off.